Hey, what's going on everybody? I'm playing some Conquer's Bad Fur Day. I'm not entirely sure what this video is going to be all about, but I'm playing on a ROM with some cheats enabled that allow me to levitate, and I figured why not just kind of go through parts of the game and see what we can exploit and what is unbreakable. Because as far as I understand, this game is extremely unbreakable. This game is very resilient, it does not like to be broken. Things that happen out of sequence tend to like break the game from letting you progress any further. Like for instance, what I just did there was I just uh, floated up without even getting my, my frying pan, even though I have it, and interacting with the gargoyle. As you can see now that I'm in the windy area, there's no bee's nest. Bee beehive, that's what they call it. <laughs> but I still will interact with these beetles. And I can still interact with Birdie over here. It's me again. But I don't have any money to pay him. Because I can't get money from the bees. So already the game is broken. You cannot skip the gargoyle. One thing I'm sure a lot of people have always wondered is what is up on the windmill? Because you can't make that jump no matter how hard you try. And when I was a kid playing this game, I tried like crazy to get up here, and I just could never make the jump. And if you've uh, always been wondering, there is nothing up here. <laughs> it's just a, uh, it's just a trick. You can walk all the way up it though. There's collision d detection on all the ramps. Go all the way up to the top. You could try this door. There is nothing. And I can even float on up above and check out the very top. There's a little like bucket here. It has no point. And over here, again, a little bucket with no point. Nothing you can do with that. And uh, you can stand all the way up on the top and look at the surrounding area and all the glitching textures. <laughs> Obviously, you're not meant to be up here. But it's still, it's pretty cool. Now, there is a trick where you can climb up the beehive holes and actually get up here. It's very complicated though, so it's easier just to float. And it's about the same. Not a whole lot to see up here. Not really anything to exploit. You can kind of just look around. Get away of the land. Now, there is one thing I discovered when I was messing around before. Because I had an idea, I had a theory, that maybe you could skip all the way to the spooky chapter or to the It's War chapter from the beginning. Because the two doors are there, and if you could figure out a way to clip through them, then maybe you can skip right to that chapter from the beginning. As you can see, I am behind the door, and I just cannot go any further. The loading zone is just not there. I'm swimming in water, you can see me kind of clipping through a little bit. But as far as I go back, nothing happens. There is no loading zone. And I can also just kind of pop straight back through. <laughs> early skip to Spooky is a no-go. How about an early skip to It's War? All you have to do is go through that door that does not open. And you know, in theory, the It's War loading zone could be there but I really just cannot figure out a way to reach it because the only way you can drop down to hit the loading zone is if I would drop off of this, like so, and go underneath. As soon as you go underneath, you pop back up. Something in the game's code that tells you if you're in a wall, to pop you back up to the top of it. So there's a few other places that maybe we can sneak to in the very beginning. And we'll see if we can get into the entrance of Bat's Tower. I mean, it's just an open hallway. And once again is a no-go. There is just no loading zone there. What I'm guessing is that there's different instances of the windy area that are loaded in during like different times of the game, and that way none of this stuff is exploitable. But we've made it to the Pooh Mountain area, which we're not really supposed to be in because the beetles are supposed to be blocking the way, but we came in the other way. Now of course the barn boy's door is not open, so there's no way we're getting in there. But one thing we could check out is this little extra area that you never really need to come to during the story if you know what you're doing. There's usually a bridge that you can try to cross and eventually it breaks and you can never make it across to the Federal Reserve Bank. And even if you did, there's an invisible wall here. However, if we go a little higher, you can get right over it. So now that we're at this area early, maybe there's a way to clip into 
the bank and start the last chapter early. And I wish there was, but there, <laughs> there really isn't. However, one thing that's kind of neat is if you go back through here, you will end up inside the busted tower at night, which is the end of the game, right when you get done with its war. And for some reason, this door will just float infinitely. It's just completely glitched and just going its own way. This area is still pretty locked down, though. Not really anywhere you can go. Now, if you come to the side of the bank, you can float upwards, and there is a little hole in the wall right here where you can float up into it and try to navigate your way right behind the door. So you can get behind this door, and if you walk back, there actually is a loading zone. And you'll show up in the bank as Neo Conquer. No cutscene plays, nothing happens in here, and there's nothing you can really do. But you can get into the bank early. There's just nothing really happening. And no other way I've found to glitch through the elevator door or anything like that. But still, it's kind of cool being in here and exploring a bit. Okay, how about skipping Marvin? The whole reason for feeding Marvin is so you can get those two blocks off the top of one another and make a pathway up onto the roof. What if you just go straight up onto the roof? The button does not work. The money... Oh, is obtainable though. But still, the button to open the door does not work. Like I said, this game does not want to be broken, does not want to be played out of sequence. So after progressing normally for a little bit, we come to the part of the game where we're going to cut Frankie down from the ceiling because he tried to hang himself. After cutting Frankie down, you can get a good running jump from this platform and land right on that wooden beam, you can jump straight through the wall, stay close to the seam, and you will skip straight to the second phase of the Haybot fight. That's a trick that's used in speedrunning. Now for our exploit, which is, I'm just going to float straight away from this, skip the entirety of the Haybot fight, the rising water, the electricity, and we're just going to go straight on out of here with my broken leg and all. Now normally as you would exit this fight, there would be uh, one of those monk guys here with a slab. He would throw you all the way up here. Since we can float, we don't really care. There's no money here telling us that we're screwed. The game did not want us to skip that, and it took means to prevent us from progressing. But you can get out of that Haybot fight extremely quickly. <laughs> you just probably won't be able to finish the rest of the game. Okay, let's see if we can get the money above the sunflower without actually getting her the bees and showing off the boobs. And that is a no. It will not let us pick up this money without actually doing the, uh, the quest first. So that's really all there is to see in Barn Boys. Now let's move on to Bat's Tower, see what we can exploit here. Now, first thing you may be thinking of is the money that is floating right here. And it'd be nice if you could just climb right up here and get it, but same thing like with the sunflower, you just cannot grab the money early. You have to wait for the big dogfish to crash into the wall for you'd be able to grab it, I guess. So in theory, maybe we can get behind the safe door early by dropping down like that. And you can! Pretty amazing. But like I've said, nearly everything you exploit is going to mess up the progress of your game. I can go straight through the little hole and into the area where you would fight the big brass boiler. But as you can see, the wall has not been broken and therefore I cannot get any further than this. You can just see my silhouette. And upon exiting the vault, I'm brought back to the intro cutscene for the chapter because it knows I was not where I was supposed to be. So let's proceed with things a little more normally. Now I'll show you another little speed running trick that will be a lot easier with levitating. But you can make a little jump right over this beam. It's kind of tricky. And go low enough. There we go. Clip right into the wall there. And once you go out of bounds, you'll snap all the way to the top. Like I said earlier, this game, once you go out of bounds, it wants to put you right at the top of whatever you're in. You can come all the way over to the money! So that's something easy you can get early. 
So now we're in the big brass boiler fight, the big boss room here. You can float around, try to go back the way you came, but there's an invisible wall preventing you from going back from where you came from. There's not really anything to exploit here. Moving on to the Great Mighty Poo boss fight, we can actually immediately turn away and come over to the glass door here. And what we can do is float up top of it and squeeze on through there and drop right on down. And you can even get the money. However, grabbing the flusher does nothing. You can just walk right back out the door too. So the only way to beat this boss is to fight him normally. Moving on to Ooga Booga. Now I've tried like hell to find a way to get into rock solid early as well. But there really is no way. Floated all around here, there's no weak walls that you can clip through or anything like that. It's solid. Now skipping forward a little bit, we come to this part where the giant lizard's mucousy tongue is out and you cannot run up it. You have to dry him out by sprinkling salt and pepper in his nose and making him sneeze all that mucus out. Let's see if we can just float on over to the top and uh, go on in anyways. And that is a no-go. Like I said, they've thought of everything in this game. <laughs> they really want to ruin my good time. Now inside Rock Solid, there is not really anything to exploit, unfortunately. You can float right up to the top, but you still need boulders to hold down the, the buttons. So nothing really helps you here. You can just kind of float around and explore the place a little bit, which is always fun. And I think, uh, actually, I can even get inside the cage. There we go. So you can get inside the cage with Barry a little bit by clipping through the, the wall of the, uh, the ceiling. But she doesn't notice you still, obviously, and you can just clip right back out of it. So that's really all there is going on in Rock Solid. I've noticed a few things during the race sequence. For instance, you can just come right over to the money here. And clip straight through. The money turns small when you get close to it. You can't pick it up. And you can also not go through here. So, you really have to do this part normally. And once you're in, you're kind of stuck. Something else that's a little interesting at this part is I can actually float on this uh, board here, which is kind of fun in, in and of itself. But we can also get to the uh, final lap early, even though it doesn't help us at all. As you can see, the door to my right is blocked off, but if we just kind of float, we can get right onto the track early for the final lap. However, it just spits us right back out in the normal area, so it's really no point to that at all. Now we're in the Colosseum, and we can kind of just float wherever we want to. This is a huge area. When I was a kid and I played this game, I always found myself wondering what was in this over here, because to me it looked like a tunnel. I don't know why I always thought there was some kind of secret in here. But as you can see, it's just a wall. Childhood ruin. <laughs> Okay, let's see how far we can go back the way we came. Maybe we can go all the way back to the racetrack. The lava racetrack. You're obviously not supposed to be down here. If you came five feet out, you would die in lava. But since we can float, we can come all the way out. And we can see that it just sort of ends and you can go into the void. And go behind everything. Until it pops you back up. And we're all the way up in the stands. You can see these huge pixely guys, cavemen holding conquer signs. If you ever wanted to get a good look at these guys, they're kind of all the same. Just flat little textures. And you can actually come all the way over to Ooga Booga and Jugga and say what's up. Even though they don't really interact with you. Although he is looking at me. That's kind of interesting. And she's a little bit smaller than when you see her in the cutscene. <laughs> and he just disappears when we try to get on top of him. Let's see if we can go through here. We can, we can come right back out. And we can go right, oh no, we cannot go right back in though. 
That's interesting. So if you make your way up to Ooga Booga, you can go... <laughs> what the fuck? That was interesting. You can go uh, behind him through the door, but you cannot go in the wrong way. I guess that's just in case somebody happened to get some kind of super boost and land up there by accident. Let's see if we can go all the way up above his throne and out of here. And you can. You can actually just straight up leave this entire area if you want to. So I guess that's really all there is to see in the Ooga Booga area. Moving on to Spooky, which is one of my favorite chapters. It actually has a few skips in it that are used in speedrunning. One thing I've always wondered about Spooky is, uh, is there a way just to get out of here? Because the way you exit is on Mr. Barrel. You float on him, or you roll on him up this heavy stream that if you try to swim it, you just can't make it no matter what you do. It just keeps pushing you back down. But if you float, you can get all the way up here, which seems like you could just then leave the chapter. But they've thought of everything, of course. So even if you make it up here, you ain't getting out. Now this skip is not used in speedrunning, but it is kind of cool. If you kind of wiggle yourself around this corner of the door, it's a little bit precise. It's slip right underneath. The camera will wig out for a second. And eventually you'll pop through. And you're in the cemetery early. There will be no zombies. Nothing to worry about. But also nowhere to go. The door won't open. There's no way to get to it. I've tried like crazy. I saw an old video where a guy got up on this tombstone here, like so, did a crouch jump, and he made it all the way around and onto the top of the doorway. I tried like crazy and I could not get that jump to work. But I can just float up here. And so what he did after that was uh, kind of got himself wedged in between the ball and the wall and landed up here. So, if there was a loading zone behind that door, maybe we could hit it. As you can see, there is a little hallway. But, like I said before, as soon as you go underneath something, you pop back up to the top. So it's either I let myself fall all the way and die, or I just pop up to the top. Now here's a glitch that is used in speedrunning. It's kind of cool. You clip right through this wall here by doing a big jump towards the wall. Like so, and you'll clip right up to the ceiling, or right up to the roof of the entire mansion. Now what you would want to do is get a running jump off of the edge of this platform, and jump all the way over to the lever you can see in the, uh, just off to the right of Conquer there. It's a pretty hard jump to make, but you can make it, and that'll open the area for the third key immediately. You can also get a pretty cool look around at the, uh, all the scenery. The whole layout of the land. But other than that, there really isn't much to exploit here. You can just kind of get a good look at everything around, the way it's all laid out. So, I'll drop right on down onto the switch here. And that's how you open the door and get the third key early. What you would then want to do is come over here, get a good jump there because if you don't make it, you're screwed. And you want to jump across that pipe and over to the third key. And then you can get out of here early. So that's kind of exploitive. And I wish I could find something in the war chapter that was noteworthy because this is the longest chapter and it's uh, the most action-packed of all the chapters in this game, but I really have not been able to find anything. The one theory I had was maybe you can just get out of here early and into the assault by just kind of clipping past this airplane. As you can see, I can get past it if I go high enough. But there does not seem to be any sort of loading zone here. I can just go past and then fall to my death. So, moving on to the assault. What can we do here? Well, we can kind of just fly right on over all the fences. And we can go straight to where we're supposed to be. Except the cutscene does not trigger because I don't know why. We just skipped everything, I guess, and it doesn't know how to handle that. Even if we come back around and run in the way we're supposed to, 
Still nothing happens. This guy just hangs out. We can't hit him with the pan or anything. And this part becomes a little easier to get through because you can just float above everything. We'll see if we can just kind of sneak past the rest of the teddies. Ooh, he got me. Oh no, he didn't. Looks like he got me. But obviously they can't really touch me without... I mean, they can shoot me, but... They can't really touch me because I'm floating on the ceiling. And there ain't nothing they can do about it. Can't go up inside their little things, unfortunately. There's a collision there. They are shooting the fuck out of me, as you can see. And once I get here... Well, I'm kind of screwed. The cutscene doesn't trigger. I guess they all have to be dead. Let's see if we can take them out. There we go. Oh, you just take out that one guy and then I'll trigger the cutscene. Now, yeah, moving on to saving Private Rodent. Let's see if we can just leave him behind. Maybe we can just get straight to the door. It's not quite letting me. All the way. Oh, there we go. Made it over the invisible wall. Just kind of floating over everything. No bombs are dropping. No planes are flying over. Oh, there's one. <laughs> and I'm kind of just going right past everything. And let's see. Still, if I pull out the bazooka, guys start dropping. And it seems to be business as usual on that front. And they're shooting the fuck out of me, but we might have been able to actually skip saving Private Rodent. It's uh, leaving Private Rodent for dead. They're still trying to kill me quite successfully, but we can make it past them. So wow, I actually did not know that until recording this video that you could actually successfully skip saving Private Rodent. And obviously he's probably in this tank, otherwise we're not going to be able to proceed any further. Oh shit, I spoke too soon. I can't get in this. I can't get in that tank without going through uh, saving Private Rodent. The hatch is not open, Rodent's not in there, there's no way to get into the chemical area. Let's see if we can maybe go on over this wall and into a loading zone. Oh shit! Would you look at this? This is the tower area. And there is no tower. However, there's no loading zone right here where it should be. That's the drop down. I can't see. Okay, so I spoke too soon. You cannot skip saving Private Rodent because it will break everything. And now for the final countdown. We should be able to just float along the ceiling the entire way and avoid a lot of these laser beams. Should make this part pretty easy to just slide on through. Okay, so if you come over onto that pipe, you can kind of just clip right through the wall. Let's see if I can go all the way and skip the uh, final battle in this area. You know where I am, it's kind of complicated to see. There it is. Maybe there's a loading zone. <laughs> there is not, so I've gotten to where you should be able to leave this area but we have to clear it out when the uh, laser beams light up. And I think now that I've clipped through the ceiling and gone through this whole area, oh, there it goes. So now you can do the final fight. All right, so now we're at the final stretch, which is where teddies have bazookas and they are incredibly accurate. So let's see if we can just get away with floating on over all the fences. And we have managed to do it. It's just that easy when you can float. 
how to trigger the final cutscene of war. And unfortunately, I have not been able to really find anything in this area either. I cannot go over the beams, even though it looks like you're over the beams. It stops you anyways. So it's quite unfortunate. In the final boss fight, you can float in the big mech suit, and it doesn't really do anything for you, to be quite honest. Like I said, this game does not want to be broken. It is not easily exploited at all. You really gotta do the uh, final boss fight the way it was intended. You could just be a little more floaty. And that is pretty much it. That is all the exploits I could find in Conquers while I was floating around and trying to break the game. Very unsuccessful, I know. Kind of a weird video, but I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you like this game, because I like it a lot. That's why I'm doing all this weird shit. Later.